So good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar where we'll discuss quality management challenges of manufacturers. And I'm Todd Sanders with Five Eyes Solutions. And, and uh, simply put, we help companies improve processes uh, using technology. And uh, one of our valued partners is M-Files. And they have technology especially built for quality management, kappa management, among other things. And it provides better visibility and tracking and an easier process, audit process um, for your quality management. Um, so today's speaker is Dave Stanley from M-Files, and he's their quality management uh, subject matter expert. And uh, M-Files has developed a solution based on years of experience and collaboration with manufacturers. And Dave's going to walk us through some of that information and how they've used that to tailor a solution specific to manufacturing and quality management. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone's mics. So if you have any questions or comments, type them into the, the chat area, and we'll try to cover them at the end. And then also, if you have any questions, you can contact myself or Chris Ivey at 5 Eye Solutions, and that information will be at the end of the presentation. So with that, Dave, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you very much, Todd. I appreciate the introduction. <clears throat> As you said, I am one of the subject matter experts at M-Files around our quality management solution. Uh, M-Files in general is a content management platform, an intelligent information management platform that allows you to do so many great things around interacting and managing and finding and understanding the data that helps you to run your organization that really powers it forward. Today, we're going to be talking specifically around how we have found some best practices with quality management and that kinds of information. Uh, we have issues that are encountered uh, when there is that lack of quality documentation control and people don't know what they are supposed to be doing when they can't find it, when people are constantly searching through a million different folders, a million different systems to be able to say, well, how am I supposed to do this when they're out in the field and they can't find it or can't access their system? How do they find that? And from that lack of ability to find things or, or lack of understanding what's really the current document for this, you get some exposure uh, into compliance and risk issues. Or just in general, if you're not tracking these things correctly, if when an item does pop up, you don't go in and, and handle that and tackle it correctly, then you're going to have more and more risks popping up and more and more exposure to compliance issues. And when you've got too many things that are going on, too many problems that are out there, that leads into some missed opportunities. If you can't really go out and see what has gone on, what are these metrics around, what issues are coming in, what problems are you encountering, what opportunities might be out there, you're going to start to miss those opportunities. So all in all, we're trying to get a better set of clarity around the processes, around responsibilities, to help you have that handle into managing your business through managing the quality aspects of it. And there's certainly more to your business than just the quality, but we found this to be a core component that if people don't have their hands around this, it really can just sort of fall apart at the wheels. So specifically, what are we trying to manage today? We're going to be talking about controlled documents, uh, you know, your policies, your procedures, your work instructions. How do you maintain them? How do you make sure the right people are reviewing them? How do you make sure that the right people are approving them? Further on from that, you're also going to get into when you have changes in these kinds of documents, when you have a change in what your policy is going to be, when you have a change in how people are supposed to be doing their jobs and how they're supposed to be interacting with other folks, are you telling the right people? How do you find and identify the right people in your organization to alert to there's new versions, to verify that they've actually read and understood those changes? And we can help you to manage that process. We're also going to talk about issues and actions, nonconformances, deviations, corrective actions, preventative actions. They're known as CAPAs, uh, the C-A-P-A -A kind of thing. When a problem pops up, uh, whether it is with a customer calling in and complaining or with one of your suppliers uh, or anybody else that might be saying, hey, there is a problem. Maybe it's just internally and somebody's notif noticing that a policy isn't being followed. You want to be able to keep track of those. You want to have a log of those items. And whether you call them nonconformances or deviations or recorded issues uh, or really anything, terminology is not quite so as important as understanding the core concept. 
we want to be able to have a place to record issues, to specify these actions, and be able to follow up on them, and to be able to verify, yes, they are in fact getting done. What is the severity of these items? Help us to classify this and be proactive about it. And then finally, we're also going to be able to help facilitate the audit process. This goes very much hand in hand with recording issues and actions, but perhaps it's going to be a new customer coming in and saying, we want to verify that you've got the appropriate controls, you've got the appropriate capacity. And when they come in and say, we want to do this kind of review, you've been able to show, and we have a system to manage this. Anything that you tell us that you're concerned about, that's wrong, that you're finding to be an error, we're going to write that down right here in our system. And from this system, we're going to be able to go out and assign it to other people to take action upon it. Showing that you have that kind of system can be a huge amount of trust that they're going to build in you. Showing that you do, in fact, have control over your system, control of your processes, and that you're going to be responsive to them. You might also, in hand, want to be able to audit your suppliers. You might want to be able to go out and verify they're doing things correctly, that they are going to have the right quality controls, that they are going to have the right processes and procedures and security uh, in place to make sure that they are going to get you the appropriate supplies. Perhaps it's going to be part of the overall chain, and your customers might, in fact, want to verify that, yes, you have, in fact, qualified all of your suppliers. Uh, these are all good things to be able to show and provide evidence of, especially as we get into this last part, the regulatory authorities, or perhaps it's the cert certifications and the standards that you might want to get. When it comes down to somebody coming in and, and trying to get you certified on ISO 27001, being able to, again, show that you have your system under control, that you're classifying your risks, that you're following up on them annually, that you're verifying and responding to any issue that may come in, Having this as your centralized location can be very powerful and shows that you really are on top of these things. And why is it so important to show this? Uh, because really there can be a lot of information that's out there. We have seen as we've gone through lots of different industries, the general rule of thumb is that information is doubling every 18 months. But 85% of that information is unstructured data. All of these communications that are going back and forth, all of the, the emails, all of the chats, all of the documents that get written, the projects that are being collaborated on, how are those things actually either structured or just flat out unstructured? But there is copious amounts of it all going on out there. So let's talk about that a little bit more. We're not just asserting that. We're, we're sort of looking out and saying, well, you've got your customer and they're going to come into client services and you've got some communications that are going on from there. You're also going to be able to have interactions from client services into quality. Perhaps things are going on or sales that they're going to need to be able to interact. In. Sales goes with manufacturing and manufacturing is talking with quality department again to make sure things are all happening. That's going to be interacting with sales a little bit more as they're providing more feedback into the customer. Perhaps the customer is going to directly contact our manufacturing department as they have more specific requirements. All of this information is flowing around for a customer coming in and, and trying to engage with you. If we just look a little bit more specifically at our quality process from all of these connections, all of these data flows that are going on, all these documents that are getting generated, all these emails that we're processing and following through. When we just look at quality, we're able to see perhaps you've got a compliance department, perhaps you've got the manufacturing floor. There's some design aspects that are going to go into meeting whatever kinds of needs you're trying to fulfill. You're going to have an actual QA people making sure things that have been created and have been designed are actually meeting those specifications. And maybe you're eventually going to have an auditor that comes in and they're going to say, yep, we want to make sure these processes are all getting filled. All of those bullets from the previous screen have little bits of more microcosms of more information being generated, more processing that is getting done. So when you look at this little microcosm, and you say that we're repeating it across all of these different kinds of items, this is where we're getting to the quantity of information doubling. All of these things are getting produced. It is so much unstructured data 
that it is needing to have a method to this madness. We need to be able to say for these core components, what is it that we're supposed to be doing? And that's where we come into those challenges. The lack of quality documentation control. In the midst of so much information being generated, have you really controlled these items? Do you really have specified how jobs are supposed to be done? What your policies and procedures are? When you have a problem, somebody has reported amidst all of those emails, all of those, those conversations that there is a problem, that something needs to get scheduled, is there a consolidated place for this? Because when it comes down to the compliance and risk issues, when somebody comes in and says, show me how you're actually doing this, show me how you're classifying an issue that might be going on, having a consolidated location to be able to point to and say, this is where we're doing it. While we might have all these other conversations, everybody has been trained and acknowledged that when a customer complains, that when a supplier has a problem, this is where we're going to enter it, and this is how we follow up upon it. That clarity that we can provide to that to verify, yes, we are tracking these things, helps us to, again, continue to pursue all of these opportunities correctly, that we're not getting distracted by, whoops, we might have an issue that was undetected. Whoops, we might have a complaint that got lost or a problem that we have with our supplier that we never quite followed up upon. If we can keep all of that constrained and managed efficiently, then we have so much more bandwidth to continue to pursue our other actual opportunities. So really, our system lets you set it and forget it. You don't have to like not ever do anything with it, but for the most part, you can trust that, yes, we are in fact recording these things, tracking these items, and you can have more and more time to do the critical portions of the rest of your business. So how do we actually start to do this? <clears throat> how do we provide this framework, the intelligent information management of M files? What do we do to really assist with this and provide more and more value around it? At its core level, we can say, hey, we had all of those different pieces of information that were getting scattered out there. And maybe you're just going to have that in different kinds of locations. Maybe you're going to store that all within M files. But at the end of the day, within M files, we're going to care about what something is instead of where it's stored. So whether you're having document types or customers or dates or different kinds of permissions, you're going to be able to access, you're going to be able to find things based on what it actually is. You don't need to care about where did somebody go in and put this. You're not going to be diving through all the emails to find all the different kinds of issues. You can just come into M files and say, hey, we've got a particular problem. We've got this kind of document. And we're going to be able to categorize all of this information that we want to be able to have, take a little bit of that unstructured data, and provide a bit of structure around it. And we're going to be able to say, well, put it into M files. And we're going to care about things of what is the process that this is associated with? Is this a risk that we are trying to classify? Who owns the risk? What is the actual record that we want to be able to have produced? These are the key things that we want to be able to track in our basic system, but really any kind of metadata, any kind of information, you can then classify for all of your other components, all of your other particular items, your particular processes, your particular documents. We can classify it in all sorts of different ways so that you can then find it via any of those particular items. We're going to leverage that metadata to tie our information together. So we're going to be able to go and look at our regulatory inspection. Perhaps the FDA is coming in and looking at us uh, for some general good manufacturing practices. Based on us saying, hey, I want to look at this inspection, we're able to see lots of different kinds of documents. We've got a couple emails that we've logged into the system. We've got a report. We've got a confirmation of the schedule. We've got our internal plan that we have created. All of this has now just been stored within the system. But we then can come back and say, we're looking at the regulatory audit. Here are the documents that are relevant to it. We can also then say, well, because we're looking at the audit, here are the issues that we have created. 
we can see that we have this risk that was sitting out here and perhaps it was printed it was the wrong version that was being used and that's a problem uh, or perhaps the refractometer had not been cleaned uh, quite properly and that's going to have some downstream effects but we need to take some corrective actions based upon this we want to care about what are the procedures that were violated these are the things that were actually not being followed and the next step up is going to be saying well what do we do in response to that and we can get quick and easy access to all of these items just because we're saying we want to look at the regulatory inspection you can create them fully independently in the system and send them out in email, send them out in different kinds of, of vehicles for people to be able to find and respond to. Uh, but at the end of the day, somebody's going to come back and say, yep, here's everything related to my regulatory inspection. The next level deep from our inspection to our issues, we've had our particular finding. The next thing that we talked about was that we were going to be able to say, hey, there are some corrective actions and preventative actions that are needed. We get to specify this now of how is this actually going to work. We need to clean the refractometer per the SOP. We need to be able to retrain the users, and you can even log the training of these users within the system itself. So again, drilling down through the relationships that we have, we can see we've gone out and in fact have done a follow-up training. And here are the records that Alex and Ann and Bruce uh, and lots of other people have in fact gone and done and received this training. Being able to provide that documented evidence, that is always going to be a key part around quality, around proving to people that you do have things in fact in control, is that documented evidence. The system has automatically generated our documented evidence about this training being held. We can see, in fact, as well, that we have generated printable documents, things that we can now see that Alex has, in fact, trained in our ad hoc training. It was instructed by the demo user <coughs> uh, to go through and make sure they're aware of these particular items. This is the power of those relationships, of that metadata that we are tying all these things together in, that this is all within view of our one regulatory inspection. What is somebody coming in to look at? Here, it's all in one place we can now find this. Regardless of what you were looking at, you can now start find that information within the system and then see the wealth of information that it's tied to. So why do we want to leverage technology? Why is this going to matter for us? What's wrong with you know, just spreadsheets? At the end of the day, by putting it into a consolidated system and letting the system itself manage that review and approval process, it becomes much faster. You don't have independent emails that are going out, uh, not really tied to any system. You don't have multiple versions of that document uh, saying, well, which one really was the thing that got approved? You can let the system manage that. And that's part of the version control and the history of everything as well. That the links that you might have, sure, send out a link, send out an email, say, hey, this is what I want you to see over Skype or Microsoft Teams. This is the thing that I want you to be able to review. At the end of the day, it's going to come back in to the M-Files QMS system and let you have full control over that. Make sure that you are seeing all of the activity about it. It's also going to give you a larger sense of protection, a larger actual protection around this sensitive data, making sure that, yes, in fact, we are tracking what is changing, tracking what the actions are, who is it actually being responded to, being able to go back and see, hey, did somebody change what the action was supposed to be, or who is, in fact, authorized to change what the actions are going to be. This is, again, very valuable uh, for us to be able to do. being able to automate those paper-based processes. Take all of this stuff, put this together, and say, how is it that you want to be able to approve a new SOP? How is it that you want to respond to a new issue being logged, to a new risk that we have discovered, to a new complaint that has come in? 
What do you want to be able to do? You can standardize that, and then you can start to automate. Instead of sending out these ad hoc emails, let the system send out the email. Let the system alert other people. But mFiles is, in fact, fully configurable so that you can say what is the process that you want that to be. That's perfectly fine. Configure the system to have a different workflow for what you want it to actually be able to do. We're not saying this is the only way to manage a corrective action, to manage a customer complaint. This is a starting point for you to be able to come in, a structure for you to be able to use. But if you want to have three different stages of approval or one stage of approval for what to occur on particular kinds of actions, that's perfectly fine. Those are trivial changes to be able to make. The key part of it being letting the system take some of these basic tasks away from you and let you stay confident that in fact it is going on. We don't want to take away the valuable parts of what the process is that your users, your employees bring to this. They have so much intelligence baked within them, so much experience uh, of how your business runs. We don't want to take the ability to choose away from them. But we do want to take the menial tasks, the basic things, the things that really they don't want to focus on, have I sent this right email? Have I followed it up? Have I had this nag notice being sent because it's overdue? Let the system manage some of those items and free up your people to do the much more value add aspects of your business doing the actual interaction with the customer, doing the actual interactions with your supplier, but let the system be able to help them manage that, help them find the right information for it. And how are they going to find it? It really can be from anywhere. mFiles has multiple forms of clients, the mobile client, the desktop client, the web client, being able to find this whether you're on the network or off the network within the mFiles cloud or with your on-premise uh, servers. <clears throat> it is up to you of how this can be deployed, taking an easy mFiles manages everything approach versus you having things on your own servers or hybrid approaches. There are lots of options for how mFiles can be deployed, how access can be granted and managed to really let you be freed to manage your business. We're also then going to go to that next step and we can start to give you more insights into what is going on. There can be dashboards of here are the deviations that are going on. Here are the number of problems that we have found. Here are the number of audits and the audit findings and how quickly have we in fact responded to them. Here are our training requirements. So you can see have our different people actually stayed on top of their training requirements or is there somebody just not actually responding? You know what, sometimes it's your great people down at the bottom uh, that are responding to your requirements very, very quickly, and perhaps your CEO isn't in fact doing their training requirements, aren't in fact fulfilling their items. It's always a delicate matter to say, how do you interact with executives with those items, but at least being able to know that there is a problem or not lets you say what is gonna be the right way to deal with this. So that has been a lot of why to use mFiles and how we're going to go about using mFiles. Now, let's actually watch mFiles QMS go and see the system in action. What we're looking at right now is an mFiles interface. And specifically, this is looking at the details of one of our particular SOPs. You can see that this sort of looks and feels like we're in Windows. We have our URL up at the top. We have our ability to click and see this information. We're also going to be able to let you see the metadata about your documents. All of that classification information that we had talked about before, this appears within the system. Let us tell, understand what the short title is or what is the process that this is being tied to. Who is responsible for it? Who was the approver? Uh, did we have a change request that was used for revising this document? These are all information and bits of metadata that are being shown to us. This is the details of our particular SOP 693. We get to this kind of screen by saying we want to be looking at our information. And there's lots of ways to find this information. When we come back to our home screen, 
or perhaps we can even go a step further up. We can say we are just on our desktop, and from our desktop, we're going to launch into our computer, and we can see that the mFiles desktop client is in fact built into Windows. So it can feel to the users that you're just browsing around and instead of going to your network drive, you're going to go to mFiles. And that we are going to be in our mFiles QMS repository. We are now going to be able to gain access to this wealth of information. We have our common views that again behave very much like Windows. You're going to navigate through what appears to the users to be a general structure. You're going to be able to say, well, I'm looking at my current documents. I want to see my effective SOPs. And we might be able to say, show me all of my effective SOPs, the full index, the flat list. And again, we can find our refractometer document using the refractometer. It's version 2. It's effective. We've got metadata. We can see the preview of the document right within the mFiles client. We have stamped onto this document that it is version 2. It was released on a particular day. We can see the signature page that was available to us. However, we can also find this refractometer in a different process. Instead of looking at the full index, we can go up to the current documents and say, perhaps we just want to say, find the current documents by the process that it's associated with. And then when we look at our manufacturing process, we've automatically filtered the list of what we're seeing to only be those documents that were associated. This concept, what I want you to be able to take away from this idea, is the ability to say we have one set of information in the system, but it is visible through multiple different kinds of routes. You can navigate through structures and say, based on the metadata, based how we have classified this, is how it can then be exposed to the users. So whether this is your effective SOPs or your effective policies or just effective documents anywhere, this also goes into the kinds of ways that we'll be able to find our issues, our customer complaints. Do you want to find all of your customer complaints based on the severity of them? Do you want to find them based on the customer? Do you want to find them based on the status and see the ones that are open versus the ones that are closed versus the ones that are overdue? You have all of those options based on the metadata to help you find this information better, to help you find it faster. However, if you don't want to be able to navigate through the structure, if that's not how you want to be able to access your data, there is also the great mFiles search capabilities. So that you can go in and say that we are looking for just using the refractometer. I can type in my keyword search into the actual search bar. And then it's coming back to me with, here's all the information that's within the system that I have access to, because we certainly always have security around this, and not everybody has access to everything. But I can see there's lots of documents that are about using the refractometer. I've also found cleaning the refractometer, because that's sort of close. And we're seeing different kinds of information that's being presented back to us. There's some effective documents. There's some retired versions. But we're able to find this information. On the same note, you can come back into your just full list of all of our documents. These were all of our effective documents. And you can just say, hey, you know what? I want to filter this. Right now, we've only got 10 documents, but perhaps you have 100 or 1,000. And you just want to be able to say, hey, you know what? I know a keyword. I know that I'm going to be looking for just refractometer. And we want to be able to have those highlights within the actual system. Here is within that metadata where we are using this term. We can also see in the preview where it is using this term. So as soon as you open this document, you can see what it was that you were actually searching for. These are some of the very nice ways to be able to interact and understand what's going on within your system. Being able to search and search within your general view of effective documents can become very, very useful and powerful. 
So now let's talk about some of the processes that we are facilitating. We just looked at some of the documents that we have within the process, the general capability to search for items, the general capability to see highlighted information. But now let's start talking about issues. Perhaps what we're going to be looking for is suppliers. So I have both a way to get to my supplier management as well as on my pin board, I can just go straight to my supplier list. These are things that I have chosen that I want to be able to see. And now when we go in and look at our Acme chemical, we can see that we have a variety of options and actions that are available to us. We immediately can be presented with, here are the issues that are relevant to Acme chemical. We've got one that's already been assessed and there's no CAPA that's needed, another issue that is open and it's awaiting CAPAs. When we come back to our Acme chemical, we can also come in and state that, in fact, we want to add a supplier contact person or schedule a supplier audit that we're going to go out and do that with them. Maybe we're going to do a set a periodic check so that we want to go out and annually review this, and we want them to be automatically getting reminded to our internal contact people that we need to go out and schedule a new review for our supplier. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and create a supplier issue. We can see for our supplier issue that we're automatically coming up with, well, what is the information we want to collect about this? <clears throat> and from Acme Chemical, perhaps uh, it is going to be the wrong chemical was shipped. We have received something, we have found an item, our person doing the receiving has found this particular problem uh, as they have received this. And the severity of this perhaps is going to be our major issue that we're going to need a really rapid response to. The basic description is obviously very good to have. But just like that, that's all that we have to do. This brings us into the next step of the configurable aspect of M-Files. This is what we start with as what to have for a supplier issue. But certainly, different clients and different companies want different parts of the information to be tracked. That is a configurable aspect of M-Files that you can come in and say different metadata, different properties need to be shown and collected. Some of them need to be required and some of them are optional. That is up to you during the configuration to be able to specify. You can start with just what we have right here, or you can build further into the system to configure it to meet your particular needs. So we can just very simply go and create our new issue. We see that the wrong chemical was now shipped. It is sitting out here. It is awaiting the kappa. It's assigned to the QMS manager, asking them to follow up on more of their particular items. And we could follow along through this process. We could see that it eventually could become similar to our lack of adequately air-conditioned warehouse, where we're going to close it out because there was no kappa that was needed. Or we could have it like our no security alarms and have a couple different corrective actions that need to occur. This is following through our process of issues to then have corrective and preventative actions. When we do have our particular issue, we have no security alarms that were in place. We can see that we have created our two different kappas. These were created just in the same way we had created our supplier issue. We can click our quality task button and say we want to have a new corrective action and fill in different aspects of that information. But once we have those in place, we can now see it's both going to be assigned to the QMS manager. In fact, we can even select both of them at the same time and see that, yes, in fact, while some of these items vary, the responsible person is the same for both. When we come to our actual original issue and we move it to the next state, we want to assign the CAPAs for completion. We're then going to progress in our workflow for all of our objects. we now have our corrective actions. That instead of pending the action, it is now in fact assigned for completion. 
the QMS manager needs to go through and state that, yes, in fact, we have completed this task. Maybe it is going to be items like this, installing the alarms on the doors, installing security cameras. There's no further system action for us to do. If there were, there are items that are out here highlighted for us that we could have recording a new issue, requesting an update to a controlled document, requesting a whole new controlled document. These are other items that could be done within our system to be able to then show and see that full evidence versus these kinds of items that we're going to be able to say, hey, for this particular corrective action, all we're going to specify is what did we actually do, the action taken. We installed the alarms from there, and that we can now state that it was a completed process. We're going to collect the electronic signature, the credentials of the user doing this transition, because we want to have a little bit more formality around this process. When something is actually getting completed, we want to be able to say, yes, we have verified 100% that it is this real user that is stating this is to be done. This can be an important process for your audit, that you have this extra level of control, this electronic signature that is being collected to understand how did we resolve this particular item. So we can go and say, hey, this corrective action is now done. And in fact, if we go to the next corrective action, we could complete this one as well after we fill in which action we took. to save and then complete our action. And now we can note that because both of our kappas have been completed, we initially had two kappas that needed to be sent out for assignment, now they both are done, now we automatically have our security alarm stated to the kappas have been processed, that we have in fact closed that process. We automatically progressed our other item through the system. If we wanted to update the workflow and say, hey, we're gonna send out an alert when this has occurred. We're going to send out another assignment when this has occurred. We can have that all occur automatically and immediately based on how you want the system to perform. So this can be having suppliers and then going out and having different issues that you're going to be able to record. We could also go and look at things like customer complaints, where we have here is our location that we can come in and see what are the complaints that are in process uh, that are still open for us to be responding to. That we can come in and state that we want to have a new recorded issue, and this time it is going to be a customer complaint where we're going to be able to specify that our Sunny Acre Farms customer has the uh, problem that they have called in to us for, that the wrong quantity was shipped. Again, we can go through different kinds of information. Perhaps this time we're going to have a related procedure and we get to our list of all of our SOPs that we have within our system. And in fact, this one might be the outbound refrigerated shipping procedure, that this was going to be the particular procedure that was our problem, when we now create our customer complaint, we can drill into our customer, we can see the customer, we can see more information about who Sunny Acres Farms is, we can see the related procedure that in fact we're saying has been violated and access that and understand perhaps what really was that problem. From here, we're going through that same kind of process, creating corrective actions, setting preventative actions, having them be assigned, perhaps stating that it's been assessed with no kappa that was needed. These are our options that we have within our workflow. Both of these kinds of items, these kinds of processes, can be tied together, in fact, to say, well, perhaps we've had so many issues so many times uh, that Sunny Acre Farms has called in with a problem that they're now saying, we want to come in and actually audit your process. Whether it was so many problems or they're just a brand new customer, they want to have another opportunity to come in and verify what exactly is going on. This is the point where you can say, hey, look, we have our system that is under control. We can come in and look at, again, that 
Here are all of our audits. We've got multiple ways to look at what the audits are going to be. Or we can have the one view that's going to be the most relevant to us, just this audits by customer. And we're going to be able to say, show us all the things that are going on for Sunny Acre Farms. And right here, we don't see any audits that have been going on, but we want to create a new audit for our particular uh, customer. So we're going to create a new audit. And it's going to be our customer audit tied to Sunny Acre Farms. Perhaps it's going to be going on starting today. It was a surprise audit that they came in, and it's going to go through next week. What is their audit? It is our surprise audit by SAF, Sunny Acre Farms, who from Sunny Acre Farms are coming in and talking with us. Perhaps we haven't actually logged that. We don't know who it was before. We don't have the right contact people. We can very quickly and easily come in and say, we're going to create a new customer uh, contact person for this. going to be Jimmy Adams and what his job title was. It's a big one. He's the CEO that's coming in to do this. So we now have Jimmy Adams that is coming in because we want to have the information recorded. And then we can also say who internally is going to be the people that are responsible for doing this. And we're going to have our QMS manager, myself, the user I'm logged in as, that's who's going to be doing this right now. So we can create our audit. and now see lots of details about the particular audit. We now have a new process that we can go through. Perhaps we're going to have an audit document that we want to create for our audit plan, but this is a surprise one, so we're just immediately going to say it is now an ongoing audit. Once we state that it is an ongoing audit, then we have some new options. Whenever the customer comes in and says, this is what I want to see, here's a problem that we are finding, you can just come in and say, add a new finding or observation. And these are, again, going to be our nonconformances, our deviations, anything like that that we're then going to say we'll have our kappas. And perhaps this is going to be that the they're finding uh, that the refractometer was not calibrated. They said, let's look at these tools that you have that you're using to prepare the shipment that you're going to send out to us. They look at the refractometer. They said it's not calibrated. That's a problem. Uh, and the severity of that is, in fact, going to be a pretty critical one because that is going to be critical to their business that they're getting the right level uh, of sugar content within the feed that is being shipped out to them. <clears throat> From here, we could put in more of a description. And then we can just say, hey, what was the problem? The related procedures that we may have violated that we weren't actually following, that might be the calibrating the refractometer. I can even start to say, start to type in the name of the procedure, and it's automatically filtered for me to be able to find the right item I'm looking for. So I now have my related issue, our recorded issue, and I can see it's related to a particular procedure. When it then comes time to say, I need to go and do different items in response to this, here is where I'm going to be able to say that we're going to have our corrective action. The corrective action being something that perhaps in this case, it's not going to be in the system. It's just going to be retest all the products that we have. perform the retesting and who is actually going to be responsible for doing that. We specify who's doing it, when it needs to be done, and now we're ready with saying here is one of the actions. We can see that now being listed as our resulting kappa. It's ready for assigning, but first we want to make sure that yes, in fact, we have everything that needs to get done. So we're going to perhaps say we're going to have a preventative action as well. And to prevent this from occurring again, retrain the users.
we're going to retrain the product tester users and who is also going to be responsible for that action. And again, I'll have that set to be myself. So we can now have both of these actions that are specified within our system. We're going to go ahead and say we're going to assign the campus for completion because we do want this to now be occurring. And when we go to our preventative action, now is when we can do something such as issuing a corrective or preventative training. But perhaps as we are looking at this, we're seeing we also need to request an update to a controlled document. So we're going to request that update of which document, in fact, it is going to be the calibrating the refractometer. And we can send out this request, again, linked into our <coughs> actual change request, that we can now see this is a process that is ongoing, our change request tied to our CAPA. We can see that it is, in fact, going to approve our change request. And we can go another layer deep and see that we are now doing our document. Our manufacturing SOP 692 is now awaiting updates. We have started the revision of another document and we're gonna be able to push this through our process. Also from our preventative action, we had said that we were gonna to need to do training. So in this case, we're going to say issue the corrective or preventative training. We're going to be able to come down and say, well, which courses that we need to be able to have? and it's gonna be some ad hoc training. Who is gonna be responsible for doing the training? It's gonna be myself. We're going to hold it today, and the control, control documents that we're going to train are going to be our refractometer documents. And in fact, we're gonna go above and beyond and retrain on all of the refractometer documents, how to calibrate it, how to use it, and how to clean it. We want to make sure that people are adequately understanding how to do this. And then finally, we need to select the participants. Now, there's a few ways to do this, but certainly an easy and fast way, if you know who you're going to be talking about, is again, just going to be selecting multiple users that you want to then be trained on our actual document. So we've selected a handful of participants as opposed to going out and finding them and dragging and dropping them in to say, here's who they're going to be. But we can create this new training and from our training, because I am the one that's responsible for it, I am now going to state that it was completed. We went out, we had it scheduled, we performed the actual training, and I am going to vouch for all of these users. I hereby state that the training event has been completed, the associated documents have been adequately trained to the participants, and the participant list is accurate. I am vouching for these people that they have learned these documents. I put in my electronic signature again and sign off on this. And now, if I just say to browse in the window, refocus what exactly I'm looking at, I can now see from this training that I'm now going to have five participants that was correcting or preventing a particular issue, that we were training particular items, and after the system has caught up, because it can take a little moment for all of the automated operations to occur, we now see that we have nine training records that have been created. And in fact, it's still chugging away in the background. But we can see that there has been something created for James Smith having learned this document. It's now a learned and valid training record. We also have one for Bill and Andy for each of the documents that we are saying have in fact been trained upon. And then you also finally have the documents themselves, the full list that we have Jane and Bill and Andy having attended this ad hoc training. And after we give it a moment for our documents to be generated, we now have our course certificate that has been automatically generated for us, that if we would like to, we could even print this out and display for the users or hand to the auditor, showing that Bill Johnson participated in this training and that they learned these particular documents.
all of these items are going on within the system and tracking where we want to be able to go. So that, again, when it comes back to the time to say, well, let's look and actually examine what occurred within our system, that when we are looking at our audits by our customers, we are looking at Sunny Acre Farms, we can now, again, look and see, here are our issues that we had generated, whether it's one or multiples. Here was the kappas that we had created in response from our retraining the users. Perhaps we had a change request that's still sitting out there, as well as our training that has now been completed. This is an easy way for you to quickly show you are responsive to issues that are being found, whether it was from an audit or just particular issues in place. There's also the way to be able to come in and see that for your sets of issues, and you're just wanting to be contained with the ongoing management, that you want to be able to see things that are open by state or the kappas by year or closed issues in general, getting better visibility and access into the data in your system and helping you slice and dice that to do all sorts of different tasks and help you to understand how the business and how your quality procedures are being run. With that, I want to take another moment to just talk about a little bit about our general customer success, that we have done these kinds of processes at many customers in the past, and we've had some great quotes that have come back from them, talking about how we're helping them to better manage their critical documentation, to help them reduce the risk, to help them make sure that their operations are complying with standards and requirements, giving them that better level of visibility. And at the end of the day, that is what M-Files wants to be able to do. That is what 5i wants to be able to do, to help you have success, to help you have better control, better insights, better understanding of your data so that you can more efficiently and effectively manage your information intelligently. So with that, I'll hand things back over to Todd. Great. Well, Dave, really appreciate it. I think. Um... Obviously, everyone could hear your uh, experience in the matter, and I think uh, we see how this can help manufacturers not only navigate easier, but provide a, another level of uh, risk avoidance. Um, as you can see on the screen there, if you have any questions uh, or need more information, you can contact uh, Five Eye Solutions, uh, Chris Ivy or myself there. Um, does anyone have any questions before we, before we leave? Okay. Well, again, Dave, really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, we, uh, we look forward to hearing more about this. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Very good. You're very welcome. Thanks. Bye. Regards.